So I'm Brett McMillan. I'm the, uh, I work with and my team works with the federal civilian agencies of the federal government on their cloud migration. The federal government's been doing this for a very long time. A dozen years ago, Amazon Web Services started back in 2006. And in that very first year, we had our first government customer. And over the years, what happened was many other government customers realized the value of cloud computing and they started moving to it to the point where by 2010, 2011, it was getting so pervasive that the first government uh, CIO decided to come out with the cloud first policy. And from that point forward, what happened was agencies started picking things to move to the cloud. And they did things, um, there, a lot of agencies started with their email services, and then they did um, uh, websites and things like that. And today, what we have is just about any imaginable workload is work running on AWS or running in the cloud today. Everything from uh, cloud uh, uh, websites to uh, mission critical apps to systems that need security from personal health information to PII, to other secure systems. And we're seeing this in every department and in virtually every sub-agency has done something into the cloud. So clearly today, here a dozen years later, uh, the cloud is the new normal within the federal government. Now the question is, what's next? What can we look forward to moving forward? And I'd like to give four predictions for what we're gonna see over the next several years. And I think the next several years is gonna be much more exciting than everything that we've seen in the last dozen years because what's gonna happen is these agencies are going to start taking the capabilities of the cloud and they're gonna optimize, they're gonna be able to do things in ways that they never have before. Now these four predictions I'm gonna give are really easy predictions to give because it's already happening. We can point to things that are happening and we're gonna start seeing it happen throughout the federal government. So the first thing that we're gonna start seeing is agencies are going to start moving from workload specific uh, cloud migrations to enterprise wide solutions. Because up to today, what's been happening is they've been picking a workload and they've said, let's, uh, you know, this has some sort of challenge and it can work better in the cloud. So let's move that to, to the cloud. And using that, even though cloud computing is very widely deployed within the very, uh, federal government, it's not very deep. In fact, I've seen numbers where the actual percent of systems that can move to cloud computing and can benefit from cloud computing is in the single digits. Uh, depending on who you talk to, it's five, six, somewhere around there. Um, and it's, what's happening is agencies are realizing that it shouldn't just be the programs that have a bright spotlight on them that should benefit from the cloud. Every program area should be able to benefit from the cloud if they so choose. And they should be able to do it quickly, easily, securely. And so agencies are working on governance, agency-wide governance policies, acquisition policies, uh, standard operating procedures. Uh, the next speaker is Jay Huey. Jay is going to talk about uh, GSA, and uh, GSA um, recognizes this as a challenge, and they've set up the Cloud Centers for Excellence, and uh, their first agency they picked is um, USDA, and they're doing some great work with USDA to make it sure that it's just not the couple systems out there that can move to the cloud, but anybody that wants to can do it quickly and easily. The next prediction I have is that workforces will become more productive. And we're seeing this in a number of groups that have already moved to the cloud. So for example, up at um, uh, CMS, Centers for Medicaid and Medicare Services, they did a large migration to the cloud and they realized um, some savings from that. And what they did was they turned to their developers and they gave every one of them a cloud account. And when you do that with developers, you're no longer limited by what you have in the data center. What happens now is these developers get near instant access to best of class services, whether it be managed databases or managed warehouses or analytical tools or AI or machine learning. And when they gave this to their developers, what they didn't realize happened, they didn't realize how much their developers were being starved for resources in the past. Because in the old model, what happened was they took all of their best equipment, all of their best servers, all of their best storage, storage and they put it towards production. Next on the pecking order was testing, because you had to test it before it gets into production. Last was development. And the developers learned to live with not being able to try, try things out when they wanted to try things out, because they were resource constrained. And when you think up of a way that you could help out the citizens, and yet it's gonna take 
three to four to six months to get the resources to try that thing out. Some of them just gave up before they tried. When they moved to this new cloud computing model, what happened was these developers very quickly and easily were able to try things out very inexpensively. So what CMS found was they were developing things faster and they were changing things quicker. And that this workforce, this IT workforce was becoming more productive. Um, the next prediction that I'm going to give is that IT systems will become much more responsive. So when you look at um, uh, uh, the traditional method, uh, something will get funded, we've got a program and you put in, and we do a large IT contract, you set out a set of requirements, you hire a contract and they perform to those requirements. And during the whatever years, three, five, ten years of that contract, Things change. Things in the world change. Policies change. Systems change. The requirements of the public change. And yet, IT systems traditionally tended to be fairly static. And we were doing code deployments. Um, at many of these systems would do code deployments once every 12, maybe 18 months. And it wasn't keeping up with the speed that we were needing changes. So when people move into the cloud and they start doing it more broadly in um, uh, many more systems, you're going to see these systems be able to uh, be much more responsive. So for example, over at um, uh, DHS, CIS, that's the uh, Citizens Immigration Service, they're the people that process everybody coming into this country. They moved to an agile DevOps model. And what has happened now is that they are able to iterate on these systems very quickly. They were in that old mode previously, and they moved to a, a new mode where they're able to deploy code on a daily basis, sometimes multiple times a day. And they're doing small code deployments, so their risk is very low. And so what they're able to do is deploy very low, low risk things, and they've integrated their security processes into it. So uh, these developers will actually check in things. So it's a DevSec op model. And so what's happening is they're able to respond to changes in policies. Um, I don't know if anybody noticed, but some administrations have one policy on immigration, others have another one. I'm not pointing any fingers at any administration. But by doing that, they're able to do things very differently and they're able to respond to whatever comes from Congress or the public and they're able to um, iterate these systems faster. Um, and then the last thing I want to talk about is um, I think that what we're going to see is more and more organizations be able to solve problems they never thought they could solve in the past. Let me give you an example of that from uh, the medical field. Um, uh, you know, IT systems used to be limited in ways they're not limited today. And one of the challenges in the medical field is uh, for uh, skin cancer. We know that for skin cancer, the Early detection is the key to a successful outcome. And yet, most of us that have a little something, a little lesion or something, we're not dermatologists. We don't know what it is. And so the challenge that, that needed to be solved is how do you get people quickly to go to their dermatologist and say, this thing's suspicious, can you take a look at it? Without flooding the dermatologist's office with everybody who thinks they have a new freckle. How do you do that and how do you get better diagnosis and how do you get people doing it? So there's a company out there called Skin Vision that uses Amazon's machine learning, um, uh, some recognition software and um, artificial intelligence. So if you have something on your skin, you can take a picture of it. And then the um, uh, artificial intelligence can look at this and come back and say, you know, there's a 90% chance that this thing is nothing and you can wait until your next annual appointment. Or there's a 90% chance that we're catching something very early and you should probably go to your dermatologist very quickly. And so what's happening is they're catching these skin cancers early and people are able to, in their own homes, take a, take a picture, um, uh, get the results and decide whether or not they go, go in. And this has greatly increased the outcomes for things like melanoma and things like that. This was a problem that was impossible to solve not too long ago. I mean, the technology was really hard to download into a, um, 
uh, d download into a um, smart app or something like that. And so what we're finding now, and, and project that forward and think about all the problems that the federal government has, and what we see is that for so long, the problems IT was willing to solve was limited by what, their, what was available in their data center. And moving forward, what we're gonna see is the problems that they're able to solve will only be limited by their imagination. So take that concept that I just had, and when you start saying, how can we apply machine learning and artificial intelligence to solve new problems? One of the things that we're seeing throughout is government agencies are looking and they're realizing that they have a workforce that's doing a lot of repetitive tasks. Could machine learning do the repetitive tasks so that the people can actually spend their time and effort doing those things that judgment calls are required for, that you really need a, a person for? And so what we're finding is when they do that, all of a sudden these, work, uh, these uh, folks are able to solve a problem here and focus on other problems that are, really need to be taken care of. So, so I, I see these four things happening in, in co combination. And uh, in short, what's happening is while we've had lots of groups move things to the cloud, we, um, now we're gonna have a change in the way we're doing things, a change in the way that we are being more effective in delivering our IT systems to be responsive to the federal government. Do we have time for a couple questions? Okay, great. Is there anybody? Question yep, I think so. They, they asked me to keep it short, so, okay. 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 So, questions for Brett? Answer the questions. Yes, ma'am. Here in the third row. Hi, this is Farua from the Federal Reserve. So, um, I wanted to ask you particularly about a point that you, that you brought up that we look at at implementations right now in terms of changing requirements, changing policies as you implement your solutions. How do you foresee that we will see an, uh, a different way to adapt to changing requirements and policies on the vendor side, let's say a SaaS vendor side, as well as on the client side, let's say, the Federal Reserve. Okay, so uh, I, I think you're asking how IT systems can respond to yeah. that, not how correct. policies can change. <laughs> you're, no, you're the, yep. that, okay. that is correct, right. how IT so, systems can respond to yeah, that. Yeah, and, and so one of the things that happens when you move um, uh, you know, into a cloud environment and when people start taking advantage of all the tools and things that are happening, we, we see more of these systems moving into a continuous modernization, a continuous changing of things. But the other really cool thing is we and other cloud um, computing companies Companies have things um, called like a, a, a software marketplace where you can quickly and easily um, uh, try out new software. And so you're talking about your SaaS, SaaS things. Um, we do find that those SaaS vendors that take advantage of all of the uh, development things are able to iterate their SaaS offerings for, fairly quickly. But then the other thing that you get when you move into a cloud environment is you have quick and easy access to a wide variety of software. And through our marketplace, you can just go in and push a button and it will configure the infrastructure to deliver the software and bill you in a in a cloud type environment where you pay on an hourly basis. So um, once organizations understand um, the potential changes in policies that are coming, IT now has the capabilities to keep up with that. Uh, yes, sir. <clears throat> How do you square with your title, Cloud is the New Normal, which implies that at least greater than 50% penetration for uh, the cloud versus what Daniel Pietro said that in the government, it's much less than 5%. Yeah, no, no, I, and I agree. It's somewhere in single digits as far as total number of systems that could benefit to the cloud to what has moved to the cloud. It's whether it's five, 6%, uh, it depends who you talk to, but it's somewhere in single digits. But it's happening somewhere in virtually every agency of the federal government. So um, we've had the cloud first policy, we've had the VATAR, and just about every agency and sub agencies have picked at least one system to move. And, um, and I can tell you at the, um, at the uh, IT leadership, 
how they move more to the cloud and how they're managing their cloud is a very hot topic of discussion. So it is the new normal for it to happen somewhere in the agencies and um, that, it, that acceleration or how we get from that single digit adoption to larger double digit adoption, I think um, these agencies are doing it by setting up these enterprise wide solutions and I think uh, um, you know, I mentioned earlier that G GSA is helping out these agencies quite a bit. So, so you don't agree with this number. I mean, you agree with this number, but your definition of normal is, is, is not uh, numeric. When I say normal, it doesn't mean that all systems have moved. What Got I'm it. saying Thanks. is that all organizations have deployed cloud services. Mm -hmm. Excellent. I, okay. think, I, I think we will uh, leave it there. Brett, okay. thank you very, Great. very much. Hey, thank you very much. Bye.